My really good friend, David Shapiro, so busy nowadays, I hardly get time to nail him down. But my goodness, we've got the South African version of Bernie Madoff has been uncovered. The guy's gone to jail. He's asked for a separate cell. He's scared he's one of his uh, thousands, it appears, of investors is going to get him bumped off uh, before he can live for very much longer. We're going to uncover this whole story of a fellow called Craig Warriner in a moment. David, good to be talking with you. Bernie Madoff came to mind immediately that I saw this story. Uh, but have you ever heard of, have you ever met Craig Warriner before? Do you know of him? No, not at all. Not at all. But, um, and can't establish what the size of this fund was, although there have been hints that it's fairly large and substantial, you know, in the billions. But uh, there's no proof of this. Uh, the problem is with these kind of structures, you can't really get into it and establish the size of the so-called fraud. You know, how much, what was the quantity of assets that he was holding on behalf of clients? So, uh, you know, that makes it very difficult. Even, you know, even in the uh, charge sheet or the, uh, you can't find it, there's very limited detail available. At this stage. But a friend, a friend of mine's brother, has had 10 million rand gone. Uh, that's just just a kind of by the by. We know that K Wood attorneys who are involved in this have also put their own money in. You can be sure that their clients would have been advised similarly. He's been at it since 2008. Uh, so although he might have been low profile, he's not on LinkedIn. He's not on anywhere. I couldn't find him anywhere. He isn't a. He's not a Biz News uh, uh. tribe member, which. To me, it says, come on, you're in the financial services sector. You've got to be consuming our content. No. Yeah. And his company is called BHI Investments, which apparently, I'm told by my friend, stands for Berkshire Hathaway Investments. Are you kidding? Seriously. Okay. That's that's very interesting. What, he, a, what Alec, a bell, huh? Mm. Alec, what's interesting about um, these characters or uh, these con artists? Even if you look at Madoff, pillar of society, right schools, clean shaven, dresses nicely, probably got a nice family and kids I don't know anything about. It. St. Stithian's boy, David. There you are. You see, mm -hmm. and the problem is that uh, by using those credentials and uh, CV, he attracts people. You know, how could this happen to us? He has a very nice boy. I know his father. I know his mother, member of the club and so on. And, and I think that's the danger. Alec, this is not unusual. This has happened repetitively. And the genesis of it or the, 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 the foundation of it, what happens? You're a financial person. You make promises. You go sell yourself. It goes wrong. So what do you do? Let me just go into the trust account. I'll take a little bit. I'll make it up and put it back. And it starts to go out of control. That's what happened to Madoff. And then eventually you can't control it anymore and the whole thing breaks apart. Uh, how many lawyers have been uh, gone to jail or struck off the list, or accountants as well, for tapping into trust funds uh, simply because they were short of money and <laughs> a little bit here, need to finance my motor car, I'll pay it back. I'll pay it back later. And I don't think these are premeditated. This is not a this is not a Tannenbaum which was premeditated, you know, where he was creating false invoices or some of the other frauds, or even like a Steinhoff where the whole thing was premeditated. Uh, this, I think, uh, I don't think it started off like this. This is, these these go wrong. So I think that's the basis of it. It's nothing new. But he's been at it. He's been punting since two thousand and eight. So clearly. Take us back to 2008, Dave. That was the global financial crisis, and lots of people lost lost the money, lots of money there. Market crash overnight. Well, it started to started to fall late 2007 and picked up a minute. Sorry, yeah, 2008 or thereabouts. I can't. My dates are slightly out of sync in that, but it started and then collapsed with the uh, um, with the liquidation of Lehman Brothers. So that was in, uh, eight, when was that, eight years, 20? No, 15 years yeah. ago. 15 yeah. years ago, 2008. 
So the fact that he's been at it for so long, Alec, he couldn't do it alone. That's the danger. You could never manipulate accounts or create false accounts like this on your own. You need to have a whole lot of people around you who are helping to create these uh, negative statements that go out to clients. And the danger comes is when somebody wants to withdraw something or do something, then you've got to go hustle out and find the money. You've got to hustle around. So you probably go to more people to, to you know, either take from other accounts or alternatively, you know, falsifying the records all along the way. And eventually, it just gets out of hand. But you've got to ask a lot of questions, not only about the people who worked with him, but also it says a trust. What what trust was it audited? <laughs> you know, we were the watchdogs. Does watch it have dogs. to be? And of course, it, it has to be? to be. You know, of course, I, unless it's just a nominee company that's made up a club. You know, but but you can't load accounts like that anymore, Alec. You can't. We could do it in the past. You know, I'm talking the 70s and 80s. Alec Hogg would phone me up. I'm on the stock exchange floor, and Alec says, buy me 100 this. I say, hold on, good, where you live. And I fill out something, and I'll put it in my nominee company. We could get away. We used to do it. You can't do that anymore. FICA, you know, the the requirements of the financial, uh, you know, of, of the Financial Securities Board, of, of all of the uh, regulators are very, very onerous. You can't do those kind of things anymore. So a huge number of questions. I don't think he's the only person that's going to fall once we start unraveling this. There are going to be a lot of people at fault. So, David, just unpack this for me. My friend tells me that uh, Warriner, Craig Warriner, the chap who gave himself up, went to jail. He's going to represent himself. He says he doesn't want bail. He, he, he wants a single cell. He's basically decided that he's guilty and he's going to stay there probably for the rest of his life. But he is Craig Warriner was a supposedly conservative investor. So he didn't tell his clients that he was shooting the lights out. It was always every year a slight increase, a reasonable increase, 8 to 10%, not 20 to 30%. Is that a warning bell? Yeah, that's, that's difficult. You see, that's the, that's the con artist. You know, that's the making you believe that everything's right. In Madoff's case, it was the other way around. You know, he was giving regular 10% where you couldn't get anywhere close to that, and everybody flocked to him. So that was, that was the difference. You know, we want Madoff, please look after it. I think in this way, he was, under, he was in such trouble, that's all he could afford to show. So I think this is going to be, uh, this is going to take years to unravel. Absolutely years. Now, what happened with Madoff, and this is the danger, people who made money from Madoff had to give it back. In other words, the fault, do you understand what I'm saying to you? Those who gave money and got the returns paid out to them eventually were called on to give back earnings that weren't real. And that, at the end of the day, uh, a lot of people got significant amounts paid back. And that's what you, that's the danger in this case. If there were some winners who pulled out along the way, they might have to give back their earnings and that. You know, that was the classic case with, with Madoff because it wasn't real. <laughs> These were book entries that were made to give you a profit. I need my money out tomorrow. Oh, don't worry, we'll get it. Sign a check, you get your money out. So you're taking money from, you know, he called it Peter Pay Paul. So he was, you'll get money from, from the so called Ponzi. So, so, so Paul has been paid. There are Pauls out there who've been paid by this BHI. I mean, what a, what a crazy thing to call it Berkshire Hathaway. But uh, surely, surely that's got to just ring all kinds of bells for, <laughs> for you. But, but so, so essentially, some people have taken, have been given money out because they might have needed it for something. But actually, those are the proceeds of crime now because it's somebody else's investment that's Wow, that's a that's a worry, David. That that uh, is a bigger worry than I, I guess. Just losing your money, you got to kick more in. I I think so. If you've been with him, invested with him, made money with him since since that period from two thousand and eight, whenever it started, then you're going to be investigated. You know, people are going to look, and that's why you've got to go all the way back 
15 odd years of entries and uh, see the people that scored and those that didn't score and so on. So I think it's this is not going to be uh, concluded overnight. This is going to take a long time and it's going to require an enormous amount of, of effort, you know, forensic auditors, uh, so on. But hey, there's a lot of... You know, it worries me. Uh, I, th- I, th- I think generally people are trusting. You know, we're all trusting. We want to believe. Uh, we want to believe these people are honest, and that's that's the tragedy of. It. Uh, uh, but you do rely. You rely heavily on, on the auditors of people like that. The, uh, you know, who are there on your behalf and who should have should be looking at that. This is not difficult. This is not rocket science to reconcile clients with the markets and. And, and do investigations into that. So I think a lot of questions are going to come out about the professionals who were involved with him, you know, around him and so on. So I, I did get hold of uh, Kaywood attorneys from Pretoria. Uh, Mr. Werner Kaywood is not available. Um, he is busy, uh, but I can drop him an email with questions. I suppose the problem that comes up here is his own reputation now because he's been... And and he says in the letter to uh, that that we were provided that we received um, that he too his Kwood attorneys have also put money in there. So if a professional like a attorney and presumably there's some accountants as well have trusted this guy, then what due diligence might they have done, or could they have found out that he was he was a crook? Was it is it possible? What are the warning signs? I think the warnings, the warning signs are the statements that you receive. You know, I I, I think that's where it starts. Uh, you've got to ask, where my shares? <laughs> you know, what worries me is the structure. This is at the back of my mind. If it was a trust, who owns the shares? Was it the trust, and therefore you are just a shareholder, or were those your shares? <laughs> In other words. You know, we're holding it on your behalf. These are yours, ring fence, pigeonhole. And that's when you deal with us, you deal with any uh, professional, you know, uh, investor, coronation, whatever it is, you've got access to what you own. And you know that that this has been held on your behalf. It's the one thing that, that started in 1987 was a very important regulation that came out. Your client's funds are ring fence. You cannot access it. And and that's important to know. I want to see my shares. Or I want to know where my shares are. I want to know where my money is. And we don't ask those questions. And I think this is perhaps the naivety of the people that they pray on. I think from Kaywood, uh, I, I, I don't want to make any libelous comments or anything that's going to get me into trouble. But they should have been asking questions. you know. And this is the problem where they also hoodwinked you know, where they also con by a smooth talking person whom they believed was acting on their behalf. This is not unusual. I I know a number of these structures around. I don't say anything. That's the clients. I don't deal with them. But uh, these are the clients. You know, this is where the cl- this is the clients down downfall. Uh, if I, if I see something like Mauritius, <laughs> or I see a name like that, I, I Guernsey, just run away. I, I just Island. okay, <laughs> okay. I'm not I'm not there. I want to know. I want to know it's here, held in a safe deposit or whatever it is. And I I always worry about the kind of structures. We're always just a little too smart. And I think just get people to to ask questions. It's your money. Ten million is a lot, a lot, a lot of money. That's one person. You never recover. Alec, you never, Uh ever Mm. recover. Mm. And it's it's just so sad. Do you remember Deal Stream? (laughs) You you remember Russell Lee? Very well. It was obvious. If anybody went into his office, you knew this was chaos. You knew you knew chaos reigned. <laughs> you know, I don't know where the shares were, etc. But so many people were sucked in because uh, of easy money. This is a lovely trading platform, etc. There was absolutely no structure behind it whatsoever. I don't think it's ever been sorted out, and the people who lost money uh, never ever recovered. And big names, you know, so. <laughs> Yeah, you know, they, they, there's conservative and there's conservative. You know, you can give conservative returns, but uh, you want people who run their books conservatively. Yeah, it's it's important. I know 
I, I just hope people listen to this. And, and he, no matter who you deal with, no matter who you deal with, just be a little weary. Just investigate. Ask questions. There's nothing wrong with it. So if I understand correctly, David, if somebody asked you for a, for a red flag when it comes to investing, the first thing is where is my money? If it's in some nebulous trust, which is clearly the case here, BHI trust, and if it's called Berkshire Hathaway, just, you know, a double, double wink. But if it's some nebulous trust, then you know that you are very much at risk because the trustees, of which there are two, and in this, this case, Craig Warren is one of them, have access to those funds and they can, they can play with those funds any way they want to. Absolutely right. That's, and that's the very important. Where are my shares? Are they in my own name? Uh, if they're in a nominee name, where are they held? Can I access, you know, uh, have I got proof of these kind of things? Um, um, I deal with, I, um, like UBS in Zurich, we have a number of clients there, for example. They will tell you these shares are in your name. Some of the Swiss shares are in a nominee tank, but they, 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 they market like that. So you know, you know those kind of things. But if ever you need to sell or you have access to it. So, You've got to ask them. You know, we deal with a number of uh, uh, providers. Uh, the shares are held in State Street. You know, the funds are held here. But we constantly ask you for reconciliations, and you constantly investigate. You know, you 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 have to ask those questions. But that's what you have identified now is is number one. Where my you know, where's my money? Is it in my name, or is it in some, as you say, a nebulous trust or nebulous nominee? So. So this guy's been, since 2008, trying to earn back the money for the trust. That's what he, what we understand so far. Um, he isn't even asking for a lawyer to represent him. He says he's guilty. He's, he's done it. Uh, why would he do that, David? Why would, first of all, he be able to get away for, uh, with it for 15 years? And then secondly, when the game is up, he just says, well, he throws his hands in the air and says... Uh, just do with me what you will. He hasn't slept for 15 years. <laughs> he hasn't had a night's sleep in 15 years. That's the problem. He wakes up in the morning, even if he's playing golf or taking his kids out, he's constantly thinking about what's going to happen. And eventually you just say, this is too much. So he wants to be held in a, a cell, <laughs> whatever it is he can sleep, <laughs> without having to concern about it. It's all out. And, and I, think, I think that's the issue. You know, you can't, you're manipulating all the time. You know, what am I going to do? So and so wants their money out. Where am I going to find it? And you, you're thinking eventually, you know, you're lying so much you don't know the difference between truth and lies anymore. You can't, you can't reconcile that anymore. Uh, you know, they always say a, an honest man doesn't need a good memory. That's an old saying, you know, which is, you know, <laughs> so... Um, I, it, it's a problem, but I, th I think, I think if anything comes out of this talk that we're having now, and if you are reaching your people, you know, just ask those kind of questions, you know, just where's, where are my shares? You know, who's holding them? Are they in my name? And, and you need proof that, uh, you know, those are yours. Be too trusting. He actually, uh, incidentally, uh, went to the Katlehong magistrate's court. Uh, presumably not too many of his customers, being a St. Stidian's boy, would be at the Cutlehong Magistrates Court. But you say something like this could go on for a long time. For Yeah. I th the investigation's going to go on for a long time. But I think uh, simply that you have to now go all the way back and reconcile this. But, uh, and, and I think that those people who have made money from him and that I think are going to start having sleepless nights. Uh, you know, we don't know the extent. Maybe it's maybe it's not as bad as it is, but probably is that it's got to this kind of point. You know, 15 years later, he hasn't been able to reconcile it. So what he's been doing with the money. I think also sometimes the people that deal with him have to be questioned as well. Uh, you know, we've got to do our own regulations. You know, for example, if he was dealing with any financial institution that trust would have had to be registered. You start to ask questions. You know, who's, I, I find that also a big worry as well, 
that um, you know there are a lot of people out there who want to make a quick buck and who want to do the dealing on these behalf. They've also got to ask questions about their clients. You know, K, well, know your client. It's, it's just not an acronym. You know, it's it's a genuine thing. You've got to know who you're dealing with. They have all these regulations, and it appears they don't protect uh, the people who need to be protected. David Shapiro from Sassfin for Securities, and I'm Alec Hogg from Business.com. 